Hello. Although I am certified in music EC through 12th and my background, my major was in um, a music, BA in music with an emphasis in guitar and choral studies <clears throat> and some composition and arranging. One of my other hobbies has been history pretty much my whole life, antiquities since I was eight. <clears throat> when I was young, I used to go to my grandma's house and I would watch the movie Clash of the Titans, the old one, the one made in the early 80s with Harry Hamlin, the bad special effects, and all the monsters that seemingly looked like epileptic puppets. Um, but the story was great. And I really thought, even though they're stealing from different mythologies, for example, like the Kraken, the monster, I believe that's from a Norse, Norse uh, mythology, <clears throat> has nothing to do with the Greeks. That they ascent, or the Greeks, essentially, which were called the Hellens at their that time, classical Hel uh, Hellenism, um, they basically modified the story of Perseus and changed some things. Uh, if you've actually read the original myth, it's significantly different <clears throat> in the ending than the movie, but I thought the movie was great. It captured the idea of the Greek demigods, the, the man with you know, the hero, which is the super, where we get the ideas for the super modern age superheroes, this sort of, you know, half God, half man, which has been a universal throughout all human history, uh, you know, saving Andromeda, defeating the Kraken, over the top monsters. But it really got me interested in antiquities <clears throat> and everything in the movie from why does this horse fly to those are cool looking weapons to who are these gods to look at the structure of these buildings they're, they're going in. Why, why do they have these real cool curly Q columns? Uh, you know, these pillars, I'd call them at the time, pillars with the curly Qs. Well, those are ionic columns, which is one of three major staple columns in uh, Greek architecture, the ionic, all right, the Corinthian with the flowered or the leaves, and then the Doric, which are the basic round. You would find something like the Doric column if you were to visit the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee, supposedly a replica of the one in Nashville. You'll see the round, strong Doric columns. Uh, also, they were fattened in the middle, for optical illusion, because when you stood away, the ancient Greeks did this when they built the Parthenon, they would stand away, it would actually make the columns look bowed in, so they fat them out for optical illusion. Nothing short of brilliant. So why am I making this video? Because in the event that we want to expand electives, an idea that I had that would make uh, basically any school district kind of, a, kind of a sparkly diamond that might attract some kids is to offer a class in archeology. span um, anthropology has always been a strength of mine, although I only took one or two classes in it in school. I spent my life teaching myself since I was eight years old out of books. And I, um, why are the University of Chicago t-shirt, for example, if you were going to study ancient Near Eastern scholarship, this is one of the universities to go to. This is the big one. They have a lot of major reliefs, um, a big reliefs, bar reliefs from the, um, Assyrian Empire during the reign of Sargon II, who was, and uh, his cr crown prince, son, Sennacherib, uh, which, you know, are actually mentioned in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Kings, in the Bible, but also in secular sources. And you can stand there and take selfies with these humongous things. It's awesome. Those five-footed wing bulls you always see, they're called Lamasu, Lamasi if it's plural. Uh, and I'll, I'll provide some examples of that. A lot of the students I've talked to through my teachings just in passing at lunch or in the hallway have expressed a big interest in a lot of these things. Like, they like games. They like video games like Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Origins where you're fighting in ancient Egypt, but it's ancient Egypt when uh, during the time the Romans are ruling it. So it's not the old Egypt in the sense of the old or middle or new kingdoms, it's under, it's after the Greeks uh, rule, it's actually under the Roman rule, where you're, you know, part of the people you meet in the video game are like Julius Caesar, uh, Cleopatra, Mark Antony, and the kids love this stuff, and they're like, well, look at all those cool weapons, look at all these cool structures, were the pyramids, and, and I explained to them, well, this is when the pyramids were built, and then I show them how to write their name in hieroglyph, the word hieroglyph means sacred writing, right, hiero, like the hierophant, meaning the priest, and glyph is Greek for, you know, inscription or writing, so hieroglyph means, uh, you know, uh, means sacred writings, a lot of this stuff is interesting to a lot of kids, and I've had a very positive response when I'm like, you know, do you guys like this stuff? So one year I taught sixth grade world cultures and on Fridays I would try to squeeze some of that in. We were paced pretty fast because we are on a curriculum and we have CBA uh, tests and things like that to do, to do. But when we would study South America, you know, you have to study the G GDP and the oil resource. I would take one day where I would actually take it back and show them these are the Andean peoples and these are their structures and this is Machu Picchu. And it usually got a pretty good response. And that's not bad coming out of sixth graders who 
aren't really exactly the most uh, excited when you're discussing tariffs and oil exports. It's just not really the first thing on their to no list on the weekends, if you feel me. Um, but when we start writing their names in hieroglyphs, showing them structures they've seen on the TV, they kind of freeze. They kind of like this stuff. And especially when you add it into movie clips. For example, the fun part about archaeology is if you watch a movie like 300, where you know, you'll hear King Leonidas fighting the uh, Persians and screaming out, you know, you know, we won't be subject to slavery and death. There's an irony in the movie, and that's that the Persians didn't have slaves. They actually paid their labor, and the more work you did, even though they ruled over the area and demanded taxes and tributes uh, and recogni recognition that they were the superior power, they didn't forcefully enslave people. They actually paid them quite well to do the work, <clears throat> whereas to the Spartans actually did have slaves that they quite mistreated called helots, and the Spartan was a little bit more like a military state. Uh, King Leonidas, when he's fighting, his uh, plume on his Corinthian-style helmet is this way. Wrong, it would have been sideways. That's how you could tell the commander from the foot soldiers, right? So if the foot soldiers had the plume going this way, but it was horizontally if you were the commander, that's how it was like a badge of recognition, how they knew who the leader was. Fail number two. Number three, in the movie you realize that... Um, um, Xerxes uh, looks like like a Nubian prince of some sort. Sort. Have you ever actually seen sketchings and architectural reliefs from the Persian Empire, such as cities like Susa and Persepolis? You'd see what these these uh, reliefs of him look like. Uh, nothing like the movie uh, Gladiator. Take movies like Gladiator, the very beginning, where Maximus Decimus Meridius. Love that name. That's so freaking Latin. Maximus Decimus Meridius is fighting in the in the north with right with the Felix Legions, which is the cat. I can't remember. I think it was. Wasn't Legion Nine? Was it Legion? I can't remember the Legion number. I, I apologize for that. Forgive my ignorance. But he's fighting these barbarians, right? <clears throat> so as the Romans are fighting the barbarians, you know they're out screaming, and the barbarians have all the bear skins and war hammers. There's a big flaw in that movie. As fun as that movie is, as cool as that movie is, it's still one of my favorite movies. Is that at the time the Germanic the Germanic barbarians that were fighting would not have had all the bear skins and had the woolly Chewbacca look. At that point, they'd already been fighting the Romans for like 200 years, and they would have dressed and looked and fought like Roman, Romans. Fight an enemy long enough, you start, uh, you start learning his ways. Where am I learning all this? Since I was eight years old, I've, I've enjoyed antiquities, and I've picked up books, and I've studied videos, and when YouTube came out, boom, it just exploded. And I spent a lot of time traveling the countries, and I go visit these um, <clears throat> universities that specialize in ancient Near Eastern antiquities, such as the University of Chicago. And from this university, which was founded by James Henry Breasted, um, I believe this is where Howard Carter went. Um, I believe it's where Howard Carter went. Don't quote me on that, who discovered Tut's tomb and... 1922, remember he opens it up and says, I see wonderful things. Um, it's also where the famous Egyptologist uh, Emily Teeter goes. Um, there's a lot in this field, and we, we never really offer this in schools. I mean, we hit world cultures fast, and then we go into the CBAs, and then we go, and then when the kids are out of school. But if a kid were to go into anthropology as a major, um, he's very limited on what we teach in the schools. And it would be really kind of cool if we had that as an elective class, in any case that something didn't work out or... Just an idea of incorporating it would be really fun. In uh, the school that, where I work, I work with two other people who majored in anthropology, and I'm sure that they each had a specific area. My area of interest, my area of strength and study is the, um, the ancient Near East. I like things from like the old Babylonians, Neo-Assyrians, uh, Neo-Babylonian Empire especially. I'm, I've even learned some Akkadian, uh, which is kind of the, you know, it's kind of a precursor. Akkadian is kind of like, a mother language to like Aramaic and Arabic and, you know, and has ties with Hebrew the same way that Latin was to Spanish, Italian, and essentially French as well, and Romanian. Romanian is most like Latin in the grammar, but uh, as far as vocabulary, I believe Italian is actually the closest thing to it, uh, depending. But so what would we, I'll go to the uh, second video here in a minute. Okay, last I'm going to say, I'm going to do a segment of videos. Why do I put Indiana Jones up there on the picture? Indiana Jones is both the best <clears throat> and the worst thing that ever happened to archaeology. The worst thing, because it's totally a misconception, although it kind of grabs at the actual historical dubious roots of archaeology, and I told this to my mom, and she said things like, that's terrible. 
and, and laugh about it, and it's that it's eventually it's tomb raiding. People would go rip off the tombs and steal stuff and go sell them for money. Archaeology goes all the way back. Even the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians were looking back, the ancient Egyptians are looking back to their glory days. For example, the, the Egyptian pharaohs in the Middle Kingdom are looking back to the earliest pharaohs, such as Narmer, who essentially supposedly united the two lands, Upper and Lower Egypt, and as, oh, wow, what a hero. Let's start digging and trying to find his things. That was archaeology. That was essentially archaeology they were practicing. But it also fuses in the Tomb Raiders. The king of Egypt dies, right? The Pharaoh, God on earth. But we have to build, we have to erect a huge monument, a pyramid, which is a Greek name. The Greeks gave it that name, not the Egyptians. It might be just something like more like Mu in the Egyptian. And let's bury him with all of his treasure and food so he can have it in the afterlife. Well, yeah, okay, many people might have bought, many people might have bought into that because it's part of their religious beliefs. But then there's that couple of guys that are going, you know what, there's a sucker born every minute. As soon as everybody goes to bed, we're going to go in that pyramid. We're going to rob it. We're going to rob it from all of the loot. And we're going to go get rich. We're going to sell all that stuff. So the Egyptians decide this isn't a good idea. We're going to quit building the pyramids. Instead, we're going to create a valley, call it the Valley of the Kings. And then we're going to start burying the Egyptian, or the Egyptian pharaohs into these, um, these tunnels and these tombs. This is where they find people like Tutmosis or King Tut, as he's known, or uh, Akhenaten, the, quote, heretic king who moved the capital of Thebes and worshipped the sun and rejected the old ancient religions of, um, <clears throat> of the Egyptian, uh, basically, Egyptian kingdom. Uh, but then those all got robbed, <laughs> too. So everybody was robbing everybody. Um, and then the British come, and then they, you know, they want to invade the Near East because of the oil resources. And they do things like excavate, and oh, gee, they've got goodies, too. Here's the Assyrians. Let's take their big winged bulls back and put them in the British Museum, so on and so forth. So the history of archaeology essentially does, you know, start with things like Tomb Raider. And, you know, although Indiana Jones worked for the uh, university, if he, had, if he worked for the university now and he had done what he did, he wouldn't he wouldn't do it. Um, and there's a funny article I'm going to read called A Letter to Indiana Jones for his tenure at the university where they go through everything wrong he does. And if I can find it, it is very, very funny uh, from an anthropological standpoint. But the reason Indiana Jones is the worst thing is because basically he's a glorified tomb raider who basically destroys temples, steals things. Uh, where he fought Nazis. That's good. I guess he does take down those bad guys. But didn't seemingly respect a lot of people's culture. Maybe we should give those things back to the museum and their culture and uh, tr trade on a loan system. That's what most people do now. Um, the reason he's the best is, is even though nobody with half a brain essentially wears a fedora out in a hot desert, uh, they wear baseball caps and like light caps because of the when they're excavating in the sun, those things are felt or whatever, and they're very, very heavy. And um, the joke is that archaeology professors will say, how do we know who the newbies are in archaeology? They all showed up. They all show up with a fedora looking like Indiana Jones and the experienced diggers and the experienced archaeologists laugh because they're like, yeah, that'll last about two hours. And, you know, the experienced diggers all have the baseball caps. Um, so yeah, he's a Tomb Raider, he's a robber, but the good thing about him is, you know, three, I didn't like the last episode, but Raiders of the Lost Ark, dun 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 dun, dun and in Temple of Doom, dun 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 dun, bull whips and fighting, and all of this stuff got people interested in archaeology in a way they had never been before, and those TV watching, oh, let's, uh, we love Indiana Jones, we want to be Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones is cool, they go to the university, and take up archaeology as a profession, as a career. Then they find out that there's no bullwhips or Nazis or melting faces or hearts being ripped out involved. There's no cool car chases riding on top of a, uh, a tank, shooting pistols or riding a horse. And they're like, are they disappointed? Well, hold on, my camera's losing focus. No, because by that time, they've already started getting interested into the literature, the artifacts, the particular societies, and they're hooked they're studying the linguistic systems. They're reading the philological texts. Uh, they're studying the artifacts. And at that point, hold on, there we go. At that point, they're hooked. And so they don't need bull whips and action movies anymore. And so the universities say they saw a huge surge in um, archaeology students precisely because of that movie. So that's why Indiana Jones is hilarious, humorously enough, both a good and bad thing for the field. In the second... Uh, 
video, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the resources uh, that are used by the universities like U University of Chicago, Berkeley, Yale, and University of Penn. Now, the two that I visit the most are the OI, what's called the Oriental Institute in Chicago, and the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. I've made friends there. Uh, I've taken online classes. I've got a few certificates and things like that. And I'll show you some of the uh, resources, magazines, books, things that we like to use. Uh, third video, I'll go over a couple artifacts and um, show you some neat stuff that I'm thinking might have some interested or have some interested um, possible, some possible interest.